everybody and welcome to the kitchen. I'm Chef Brian cooking fresh with Green Giant and today I'm going to show you how to do a delicious barbecue beef short rib. To start with, of course, I have the beef short ribs. Have a little bit of dried mustard, some paprika, salt and pepper, some cumin as well as some chili powder, a little bit of red vinegar, ketchup, we're going to be putting some onions and carrots in there and I'm going to be using the Klondike Rose Potato which is the red skin potato with the heart of gold. So let's get started. Barbecue short ribs are one of my favorite dishes and they're very easy to make in a slow cooker. I actually have an order that I like to put things in when I'm using the slow cooker and doing my ribs and I start with the meat. Now a lot of you will actually at times like to grill your meat to put some color on it or pan sear it to put some color on it before you do this. These are going to be cooking for about 8 to 10 hours so they're going to have a lot of color and flavor to them regardless so I'm not going to pan sear or grill these. Slow cookers are one of those great kitchen gadgets that can cook things over an extended period of time. That's why they're so wonderful. If you're going to work you can put things in in the morning and when you come home everything's ready to eat for dinner so they're a great gadget to have in the kitchen. Now also once I get the the meat in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the carrots and the onions. I've actually left the skins right on the carrot because I like the flavor that they are going to put into the sauce that we're going to make. So just pour those right over top of your beef short ribs. Now also I have some of the Klondike Rose Potato and you can really see on this the yellow centers. They really have a creamy texture and a butter like flavor to them. These are perfect for our short ribs here so just put those right on top. There we go. Just kind of press those down in there. Now, I am one of those people that don't like to do a lot of dishes, so I'm going to use this bowl actually to mix up the sauce that's going to go over top of these. So I'm going to lift this into our slow cooker, get it ready to go, and we're going to mix up the sauce here. The sauce is very basic. We're going to add just some prepared ketchup. And to this we're going to add our spices. Now I have some chili powder that I'm going to add for a little heat, some cumin, I'm going to add some dry mustard as well, I'm going to add a little bit of paprika now to this and I am using a smoked paprika and this is a great trick when you're doing the ribs in the house because it will actually instill a great smoky barbecue flavor to your short ribs even though you're doing it in a slow cooker. A little bit of salt and pepper, this is really to your own preference. And for a little bit of a zing, we're going to add some red wine vinegar. Well basically, that's the sauce. That's pretty easy to do. Let's mix that together. Once you get this completely incorporated, all I'm going to do is simply pour it over top of our mixture and turn the slow cooker on. Now you'll want to cook these on low for about 8 to 10 hours so it's a perfect dish to start in the morning, head off to work and when you come home you're going to have some great beef short ribs. Just spread it out a little bit evenly and don't worry if there isn't a lot of moisture in here. Remember that the fat from those short ribs is going to render out through cooking and you're going to have a great gravy for the potatoes and vegetables. So just simply cover it up. You're going to turn it on low. Remember, keep it on low because it's going to cook for a long period of time and let this cook now for about 8 to 10 hours. The ribs have been cooking now for about 10 hours and so they're ready to go. What I want to do is actually show you a beautiful presentation that you can do for your family and guests. So first of all what I'm going to do is just simply pull out some of the potatoes that I've been cooking in here, put them into this bowl here, and we're going to mash them up because this is going to be the center of our presentation. I'll put some of this gravy in there as well and just grab a potato masher and simply mash them up. And I did have some in here that I had mashed a little earlier. We'll just combine all of these together. Now this is actually going to be the centerpiece for your plating. Put that aside. All right. Pull over our presentation platter a little closer to me. 
and just carefully spoon these into the center of your plate. There we go. Set that aside. I'm going to grab some tongs and reach in and pull out some of our spare ribs that have cooked in there. We're going to just simply press a couple of these right on top of those mashed potatoes. There we go. I'm going to take this spoon, grab a little bit of the juice in here, as well as some of the carrots for our plate. There we go. And just put these off to the side. Remember, you do have some wonderful onions in there that have been baking and cooking in there, too. Here we go. And just wipe off any spots that you may have dripped on the plate. Because remember, the presentation is crucial. People eat first with their eyes. Just simply take a little bit of the drippings in your pan here and drizzle that right over top of your spare ribs. That looks and smells delicious. I wanted to show you a quick little gadget though for a gravy separator here. These are great when you're making gravies because you can put the drippings in here and then the fat and the actual drippings will separate out. This particular one you squeeze the handle and the drippings come out of the bottom. It's a great way to make your gravies without all of the fat and they come in a lot of shapes and sizes. So you know if you happen to find one at a local kitchen store go ahead and grab it because they do make life a little bit easier. But here are our beautiful barbecue beef short ribs. They look and smell delicious. I'm Chef Brian cooking fresh with Green Giant. I look forward to sharing more Green Giant family recipes with you in the future. I'll see you all next time.